Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to a new episode of Ramadan, the month of change. Um, this episode, I will move to a new uh, topic uh, after we spend uh, many episodes talking about changing our relationship with the Quran and how we read the Quran and contemplating on the verses of the Quran because I think that's so important for us. But uh, in this episode, I would like to talk about something has to do with our children. We need to change the why. Hopefully, Ramadan help us to change the way we think about our children. And I want to start with a very interesting story about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala. Muqatil ibn Sulaiman entered to the court of Al-Mansur, the Abbasi Khalifa, when he became a caliph. So Mansur told him, Idni ya Muqatil, give me a reminder. Then Mansur said, a Muqatil said to Al-Khalifa, would you like me to re give you a reminder or admission of something that I heard or I witnessed? He said, no, something that you have witnessed will be more powerful. Then he said, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, and he looked, and all this is Umayyad dynasty, this is Abbasi, sensitive, but he still brought the, the, the subject or the example. He said, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz had 11 sons. And he left behind him when he died only 18 dinar. He was, his funeral cost 5 dinar. His grave was purchased with 4 dinars, so that's 9 dinars. And the rest was divided among his 11 or in her children. In the same time, Hisham ibn Abdul Malik had 11 sons. And each one of his children, when Hisham ibn Abdul died, inherited 1 million dinars. And Allah is my witness, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. I saw in one day one of Umar al children donating a hundred horses for the sake of Allah have enough money to give a hundred horses for the sake of Allah. And I've seen the same day, one of Hisham's sons was begging on the street for money. People, this is something I witnessed. Umar Abdul Aziz, in his deathbed, he was asked, what did you leave for your children? He said, I love for them taqwa Allah. I left with them Allah. If they are righteous, Allah said that He Yatawalla Salihin, He take care of the righteous. And if they were not, I don't want to leave for them any money that they used to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. It's been mentioned or narrated that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's daughter came to him and she was crying. He said, Sweetie, why are you crying? And it was Eid. Then she said, I want a new dress, new clothes, kids and happy and wearing new clothes and I'm looking for one. I'm the daughter of the Khalifa and I have old clothes. Umar moved by her tears and he went to Bayt al-Mal, the treasury of the Muslims. And he said, I would like you to give me the, my salary for basically the next month or next period of time. Then he said to him, why? Why would you need it in advance? Then Umar said, I want to buy something for my daughter. He said, I don't mind to give it to you in advance, but with a condition. Then Umar said, what's the condition? He said, that you guarantee me that you will live until next month. What if you die? And you don't have any money to pay me back or to pay the Muslims back. Then Umar put his head down and thought about it. And he went back. And he gathered all his children. And he said, you have two choices. We all be patient and we all go to Jannah together. Or you don't want to be patient and your father start taking money that doesn't belong to him and he will go to hellfire. Then all of them said, no, ya fa our father, ya abana nasbir, we'll be patient. And he said, 
يعني can you imagine this respond I wish that we have the father today and I wish we have children like his and I wish we have Khazin the guard or the secretary of treasure treasury that he had at that time what I want us to learn from this story today what the thing that I'm asking you to change when it comes to the way you think about your children number one I want you when you think about your children your family to remember that you only feed your children what is halal Wallah is not worth it that we do what is haram just to provide for our children Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ كُلُوا مِمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ O mankind, eat from the halal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided you with in this earth. And do not follow the footsteps of the shaytan. Because a shaytan footsteps, he doesn't come to tell you, hey, do the haram, disobey Allah. Step by step, hey, your children need that, you're doing it for a be- for better reason, you this, justify that, there is khilaf about this, you know, there's some ulama said it's okay. And by, step by step, you find yourself completely far away from the halal. You're in the middle of the haram. Make sure that you don't ever seek Allah's provision by disobeying him. As in Nabi Sallallahu said in the hadith, hadith Hudayfa, وَإِنَّ وَلَا يَحْمِلَنَّكُمُ اسْتِبْطَاءُ الرِّزْقِ أَن تَطْلُبُهُ بِمَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Do not let the delay of the provision make you seek provision by haram way, by doing what is not lawful. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُدْرَكُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِطَاعَتِهِ You only get what Allah has by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this hadith reported by Bazaar and authenticated by uh, uh, scholars or some scholars of hadith like Al Mundiri and others. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a most, in a more authentic narration, Sahih Muslim, he said, a man traveling, making dua, and Allah will not accept his dua. Why? Because he's feeding himself from haram. All his source of income is haram. That's one thing, but there is more to be said about what needs to be changed when it comes to the way we look at our children. So let's have a quick break. Stay tuned. I will see you soon, inshallah. Ramadan, 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 ya Habib, Ramadan. We welcome you, man, we all adore. We pray for happiness. If you are not positive, you cannot motivate. Absolutely. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize, you cannot even look for the good things. Absolutely. Unless it is in your mm. heart, you mm. cannot practice it and exercise it with other people. Mm. The meaning of the word, La ilaha illallah, to everyone, to all the people who are around him. Right. As many people as he can. So this is the mission. Mm-hmm. But this concept solves many problems. Yes. Whenever you visit a place that the Prophet Muhammad is sitting in, mm. if you don't know him, you will never be able to say that this is Prophet Muhammad or this is Prophet Muhammad. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Mm. Mercy is a key way or a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. And what happens is they get so many rejections but they feel so bad about themselves they don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills your current experience which by time and effort can develop yeah. so primarily you are going to you are doing this job so perfect it and this is part of our great religion is perfection mm. perhaps mm. there is another chapter about this perfect right. your work give mm-hmm. the right to the job that you have Ramadan, 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 Ya Habib, Ramadan. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to uh, a new episode of your program, Ramadan is the month of change. I was talking about the story of Umar ibn Aziz and what he left behind for his children and how he cared about only providing his children with halal and how it's so important for us as well that when we think about our children or our kids that we became a role model for them. If we don't ever do the haram to provide for our children, we only provide for them what is halal. We want them to be risen by with, with the halal provision, not suht, not haram wealth. There's no barakah in, in such wealth. And it's not worth it that you go to hellfire for that. Uh, one of the things that I really would like to cite, that a lot of people work so hard and really appreciate and respect every hardworking father and mother who are trying to provide for their children and to make sure that they are uh, uh, living a very comfortable life and to secure their future financially. I understand that. And Nabi Sallallahu said it's much better to leave your children wealthy than to leave them poor asking people and begging people for help. Absolutely. But so many times I found that we think that money is what's going to make our children safe. And money is what our children need the most. Sometimes we think that it's all about wealth, it's about money. And in the process of seeking this money, we lose uh, uh, m things which is much important or more important than money. وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ضِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ those who would leave behind them weak offsprings, weak children, weak in their religion, weak in their iman, weak in their manners, weak in their understanding of the religion. What's the point if you leave behind you a lot of money, but you did not leave behind your children who knows how to deal with life, don't know the value of the akhirah, don't know the value of Jannah. Don't fear hellfire. Don't respect Allah. What do you gain if you make them respect money, but they don't respect the rules of Sharia and Islam? Sometimes we think that this is the most important thing, that to have a good schools and make sure to provide them. Yes, that's important. But you know what's more important than that is to make sure that they will be safe as well in the Akhirah. You know, they said this uh, uh, boat had three guys in it. And uh, the, basically, the, the guy who owned the boat, and he's a simple fisherman. And with him, two guys so arrogant. One of them said, I have a PhD in, in physics, and I'm smart, and did this and that. The other guy said that he is, so the first one is an inventor and very high educated, the other one very rich, very smart, very successful businessman, and they start showing off in front of that simple fisherman who owned the boat, who took them in a fishing trip. But guess what? A hole happened in the boat, and the boat starts sinking. So the fisherman starts swimming toward the shore, looked back, and he found the physicist and the businessman sinking. What happened? They said, we didn't know how to swim. Let their degrees and their wealth benefit them at that point. Didn't help them at that point. The simple fishermen survived and they didn't. What mattered the most, what make you survive in the Akhirah. I'm not saying, I'm not dismissing the importance of education. No, I billah. But what I'm <coughs> saying that unfortunately when we deal with our children, we think about money as the most important thing. You know, more important than money Tell them what's the value of money. The skills that make them know how to deal with money. That's important. Make sure that you leave your children with, or you teach them from an early time, principles in life. Respect these principles. Code of ethics. <coughs> make them know how to respect others. How to be content with what Allah SWT gave them. The real value of money. It's not a master, it's a servant. The real value of the dunya, the real value of the religion, the real value of the akhirah, the importance of virtue, 
the importance of sadaqah, charity, the importance of good quality and, and character trait like generosity, forgiveness. Teach them how to uh, 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 learn how to be merciful, respectful to others. Had what Allah SWT will protect your children with the most. The value of time. Also, one thing that I would like us to change when it comes to dealing with our children, especially in, in, in reflecting upon the story of Abdul Aziz, make sure that you are honest with your children. Don't let them live in, uh, in basically uh, uh, not real uh, in reality. Many parents try to show off in front of their kids, making their kids believe that the parents have everything. You know what? I tell my kids sometimes, sorry, I, can't, I don't have the money to offer to buy you this new toys. I can't buy this game. I can't buy this, uh, uh, open the, the, all these accounts for uh, cell phones for each and every one of you. You know, don't let them live in a life that is not the reality. What he's told him he was very honest with his children. He said, that's what it is, that's what I have, that's what I can do, that's what I cannot do. I think it's important for you to let your kids know about who you are, what are your capabilities, what are your capabilities. Be honest with your children. Be open book with your children, so they will be honest with you as well. One of the things that I want to say about children is so important when it comes to relationship with our children. I want you to learn or to know how your children spell love. Your children spell the word love, T-I-M-E, time. The real meaning of love is time, spending time with your kids, with your children. It is sad that average parent or in America spend about, what, 18 or, or, or less minutes with his children every day. And, and this is across the board. Unfortunately, we don't spend time. And now, when we are even sitting together in dinner, every kid's like busy with their social media and their gadget. And we don't look. Parents, mother, father, they don't spend time with their kids. In the car, watching TV, in the, in the van, you know, or playing movies. And, and that's all what they do. They don't talk to each other. They maybe scream at each other sometimes, but we don't spend time together. And when we do, we don't connect. So one of the things I want to see is a change. Let's invest in this Ramadan to change this situation and to invest more time with each other, preparing food together, serving the community, volunteering, making itikaf together, maybe going for Umrah together, you know, praying Taraweeh together, talking about what these verses is all about. Maybe making competition in reading the Qur'an. Maybe in reading the book of Sirah together. Make sure that you do that. Invest time with your children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our family. And I hope this one of the changes that we can do during this month of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.